the maharaja is in search of the hundredth tiger and now let's see what happens thus the maharaja was sunk in gloom in sadness but soon came the happy news which dispelled removed that gloom in his own state sheep began to disappear frequently from a hillside village so sheep began to disappear that was a signal that a tiger is at work it was first ascertained made sure that this was not the work of a khadirmian sahib or virasami naikar both famed for their ability to swallow sheep whole so there were two people in the kingdom first one is khadirmian sahib the second one virasami naikar who could swallow the sheep as such so they had to ensure that it was not their work but it was the work of a tiger to ascertain the presence of a tiger surely a tiger was at work the villagers ran to inform the maharaja and he announced a 3 year exemption from all taxes for that village and set out on the hunt at once so maharaja was extremely happy at the news of the presence of a tiger so in his happiness make a note of this point he was so happy and he is exempting 3 years tax from that village the tiger was not easily found it seemed as if it had wantonly carelessly hid itself in order to flout that is go against the maharaja's will the maharaja was equally determined he refused to leave the forest until the tiger was found as the days passed the maharaja's fury anger and obstinacy firmness mounted increased alarmingly many officers lost their jobs so you find when maharaja is happy he exempted the tax for 3 years and when he is unhappy many officers lost their jobs so maharaja is getting irritated very fast because he is totally uncomfortable of not getting the 100th tiger one day when his rage when his anger was at its height the maharaja called the divan and ordered him to double the land tax forthwith so the land tax was doubled because he was angry so there are three points here the first point is a 3 year exemption from all taxes for that village which would help maharaja to find the 100th tiger the second point is many officers lost their jobs and the third point is the land tax was doubled the people will become discontented unhappy then our state too will fall a prey to the indian national congress this is a warning given to the maharaja by divan he says that if you keep on changing your decisions like this the state will definitely fall into the hands of indian national congress and you will lose your position now king is not shaken by this point in that case you may resign from your post said the king the divan went home convinced that if the maharaja did not find the tiger soon the results could be catastrophic results could cause sudden damage or suffering he felt life returning to him only when he saw the tiger which had been brought from the people's park in madras and kept hidden in his house now underline that point this is the 100th tiger that maharaja is planning to kill so underline that's a very important point a tiger which had been brought from the people's park in madras and kept hidden in his house at midnight when the town slept in peace the divan and his aged wife dragged the tiger to the car and shoved it into the seat pushed forcefully into the seat the divan himself drove the car straight to the forest where the maharaja was hunting when they reached the forest the tiger 
launched started its satyagraha and refused to get out of the car the tiger was a very old tiger and it did not move out of the car even when they reached the forest the divan was thoroughly exhausted in his efforts to haul that is pull or drag the beast out of the car and push it down to the ground on the following day the same old tiger wandered into the maharaja's presence and stood as if in humble supplication prayer master would you command of me it was with boundless joy that the maharaja took careful aim at the beast the tiger fell in a crumpled heap it suddenly fell down to the ground and this is what happened maharaja aimed at the beast i have killed the hundredth tiger my vow has been fulfilled the maharaja was overcome with elation my promise has been fulfilled that's what maharaja exclaimed and the word meaning of elation is extreme joy ordering the tiger to be brought to the capital in grand procession the maharaja hastened moved hurriedly away in his car so you find the hundredth tiger was ordered to be brought to the capital in a grand procession and maharaja left the place after the maharaja left the hunters went to take a closer look at the tiger the tiger looked back at them rolling its eyes in bafflement confusion so what's happening the tiger was not dead the men realized that the tiger was not dead the bullet had missed it it had fainted from the shock of the bullet whizzing past moving fast the hunters wondered what they should do they decided that the maharaja must not come to know that he had missed his target if he did they could lose their jobs one of the hunters took aim from a distance of 1 foot and shot the tiger this time he killed it without missing his mark so who actually killed the 100th tiger one of the hunters and not the maharaja so so far maharaja has killed only 99 tigers but he leaves the place thinking that he had killed 100 tigers then as commanded by the king the dead tiger was taken in procession through the town and buried a tomb was erected over it so what was done to the 100th tiger it was taken in procession it was buried and a tomb was erected so you have three points there a few days later the maharaja's son's birthday third birthday was celebrated until then the maharaja had given his entire mind over to tiger hunting he had no time to spare for the crown prince but now the king turned his attention to the child he wished to give him some special gift on his birthday he went to the shopping center in pradibandapuram and searched every shop but couldn't find anything suitable finally he spotted a wooden tiger in a toy shop and decided it was the perfect gift so underline that point a wooden tiger in a toy shop so you would have understood the situation maharaja's son's third birthday he wants to give give a gift to the child and he finds a wooden tiger in a toy shop the wooden tiger cost only 2 anas that is currency used in olden times and a quarter but the shopkeeper knew that if he quoted such a low price to the maharaja he would be punished under the rules of emergency that is rules executed due to an immediate danger to the public health or welfare so he said your majesty this is an extremely rare example of craftsmanship a bargain at 300 rupees very good let this be your offering to the crown prince on his birthday said the king and took it away with him on that day father and son
played with that tiny little wooden tiger. So what happens here? The shopkeeper gives the wooden tiger and both father and son reaches back home and they start playing with that. It had been carved by an unskilled carpenter. Its surface was rough. Tiny slivers of wood stood up like quills all over. Slivers are actually small thin pieces of wood which stood up like feathers all over it. One of those slivers pierced the Maharaja's right hand. He pulled it out with his left hand and continued to play with the prince. So there is uh, something happening here while playing. A tiny sliver gets into Maharaja's hand. He doesn't give much care to it. He just removes it and continues to play. The next day, infection flared, spread in the Maharaja's right hand. In four days, it developed into a suppurating sore which spread all over the arm. That is, infection started spreading and pus started forming. Three famous surgeons were brought in from Madras. After holding a consultation, they decided to operate. The operation took place. So what did they do when infection came upon Maharaja's hand? Mark that point. Three famous surgeons were brought and they held a consultation. They decided to operate. One, two, three points there. The three surgeons who performed it came out of the theatre and announced the operation was successful. The Maharaja is dead. Underline that point. What do they mean by saying operation was successful? They were able to successfully remove the infection. But Maharaja did not survive. That can be one interpretation. It can also be they are more concerned about the technicality or the procedure and that was more important to them than the life of Maharaja. In this manner, the hundredth tiger took its final revenge upon the tiger king. Here, the writer ends the story with a twist and he is justifying that the prophecy came out to be true towards the end. Maharaja was in a mad pursuit of killing hundred tigers and the hundredth tiger killed him. That's the end of the chapter. Thank you.